Hey everybody, welcome back to another fantastic episode of Ready to Die Fighting. I'm Chris, and for the last uh, few weeks here, I have been putting together a emergency winter car survival kit. And I've done a few videos highlighting different items and kind of reviewing them and doing some experiments. But today I'm putting everything all together and I wanted to show you everything that's going in the bag and we'll hopefully make this as quick as possible. But, uh, you know, we'll see how that goes. Um, like and subscribe if you enjoy this stuff and if you find it useful and let's go. So uh, the idea here, as I said in some of the other videos, is that every year we see and hear stories of someone getting stuck in the snow or getting into an accident, getting driven off the road, whatever, and they're stuck there maybe sometimes for days. Sometimes they survive, sometimes they don't. Um, seems to depend a lot on what they have with them and their frame of mind and, you know, if they can think clearly, make good choices while they're there. So uh, we've had such extreme weather lately. Uh, the, this past summer, just insane amounts of rain and unbelievable flooding. Like I've lived in this city, in this house, my entire life. I have never seen flooding like we had this summer. And I'm thinking if this continues through the winter, um, you know, I, I just posted a video back, I think the first time the, we flooded. And yeah, I mean, if, if that happened in the winter and we got that type of precipitation, that's going to be bad. And so I want to make sure that we're going to be okay, we can be safe, we can be comfortable until help comes. Uh, if we happen to be driving when that sort of thing happens. So I'm putting this bag together. Uh, this one is for my girlfriend. I have something similar in my vehicle. Um, so let's, let's just dive into it. Uh, the first thing I have is a high-vis vest. Um, this is great for, uh, basically, if you need to get out of the car and put down some reflective triangles or flares, if you want to raise your hood up and look around, if you want to try to, uh, if you need to get out and walk, whatever it is you need to do, if you're getting out of the car and you don't want people to run you down, <laughs> it's a good idea to put on something that's going to increase your visibility. You can also hang this out the window, stick it on your antenna whatever increase your visibility so that people it's easier for them to find you but also so that the other cars traffic that's coming they don't run you down next we have a first aid kit uh i was looking at the most likely injuries in a car crash and number one is whiplash um just general like joint pains and concussions things like that not much you can do as far as a first aid kit with that sort of thing but you can also severe, you know, severing of limbs and things can happen. Some severe punctures can happen. Tourniquet is just a great thing to have. This is a Cat5 tourniquet. Um, we took a Stop the Bleed course. Actually, we took a few of them. Me and Nate. And they actually gave that one away for free. So, I'm giving it away for free. <laughs> um, I've got a lot of tourniquets, so not a big deal. Uh, I've got a Sam Splint. Uh, they say that... Um, Bone breaks, uh, joint joint pain, joint injuries are pretty common as there are cuts, bruises, that's the type of things that you're really looking at, maybe even some burns. So I've got some burn gel, some Neosporin, the SAM splint, uh, there's some regular gauze tape, wound seal, some various band-aids, and uh, I can't think, steri strips, that's what they're called. Uh, there's also a, did I say ace bandage? And this is kind of like an Israeli bandage, uh, but different. It's um, similar. It's like a compression style bandage. I think it's made by North American Rescue. Not 100% sure. That's where I get a lot of my stuff from. So I'm thinking it's probably from there. But it's just a compression bandage. All right. And then there's a CPR shield. I just kind of stick these on the, the face shield, the mouth shield type of thing. Probably not necessary. Definitely isn't necessary. But I have them. They're cheap. Why not? So there's that. Next is a hand crank radio. It has a flashlight. Comes with two different settings there, or brightness levels, and then the SOS setting. So there's that. 
It's got the weather stations, AM, FM. Uh, it's also got USB port so you can charge your cell phone or whatever other device. It's got a solar panel at the top. Uh, don't hold your breath on that, especially if it's winter. But it's there. Uh, I did a video on this where I really talk, went through how to use it, all of its features. I like this a lot. I do recommend it. It's made by Midland. And uh, I forget the model number, but I did a video on it. Watch it if you're interested in that. This probably won't get used, but cordage, and then this is a little oops, knot tying thing. Probably won't get used in this case, but it doesn't take up much room. Could be, could be useful. Cordage is generally useful. So I threw it in there. We've got some of these uh, hand warmers, hot hands. I've got four packages of two. It says they stay warm for eight hours. I'm skeptical. Uh, I think the last time I used this, it was not eight hours, but they do get warm and they're nice to have. Um, what else we got here? Some maps. So this is a road atlas. I did a video recently on how to use a road atlas and I think I covered this one in particular and reviewed it, like it a lot. Um, but I, I recently upgraded my to a 20, 2022 map road atlas, sorry. So I was gonna give this one away anyway, so she might as well have it. Uh, more importantly was this local map. So this is just of Michigan and it's laminated. It's nice and durable and it's nice big map of the city of Detroit here. And I like how it folds. Like it's very, it's very easy to fold and very easy to see just what you wanna see. So it, it's a good size here, very high visibility. This map also, or sorry, this book also has Detroit maps, but um, it's smaller and it's, I think it's just Detroit as far as the city, Michigan cities goes. Whereas this has like many of our major cities, Ann Arbor, Flint, Lansing, Grand Rapids, Saginaw, Muskegon. Uh, there's a shout, cut, cut out for downtown Detroit. Um, and so I think this is great and the whole state as well. Um, just like your regular map stuff, but easy to fold. I like that I can fold it in different ways just to see the parts that I want to see. Um, and it's, it's nice. So there's that. And look at that, how easy that is to fold. And if you have maps, you probably have a compass. This is a Sunto compass. I have a lot of Sunto compasses. I like them. It's got a mirror. Um, I'm pretty sure I've covered this compass before. It's the same one I got Nate for Christmas. Got an emergency whistle. So there you go. This book, uh, very useful book. Highly recommend it. It covers all sorts of things from like bushcrafting, plant identification, first aid, animal tracks, uh, just all sorts of stuff. Really helpful. A lot of this I already have stored up here. Um, I also have other resources. So I kind of feel like I can probably pass this along. And it's nice and small. Something to read. May come in handy. She may need it. What's worse than being trapped in a car in the snow with no help coming possibly for days away? The only thing worse than that is being stuck with bored, angry, scared, hungry, cold kids. Uno. I love it. Everybody loves Uno. It's easy to play. It's fun. It could start some wars, realistically, but I like to keep a, some Uno cards for entertainment, morale, distraction. Um, a Sharpie and a pen. That's just useful to have. Let's see. I have a notebook, a right in the rain notebook that I included a lot of emergency numbers some general information that would be helpful, um, how to say, how to use bump booster cables, how to, uh, signs of hypothermia, signs of heat stroke, um, general tips like that, uh, to, that will hopefully help her out. And then there's also a lot of blank pages so I can add more as needed. And um, if she needs any paper to write on, waterproof, very nice books. I, I buy a lot of these for various what else do we have here? Uh, this 
folding camp stove. Uh, I've done a couple of videos on this already. It uses the sterno cans for heat. This works great. Go back and watch those videos if you haven't seen them. Um, yeah, I'm not going to say anything more about that. And then a fire blanket. Um, if we're going to have an open flame, you got to have a way to extinguish some fire in case things get out of hand. And I felt like a fire blanket was probably the best case for that, you know, especially compared to a fire extinguisher that's messy and all that, going to be stuck in the car. That doesn't seem like the best of idea, but a fire blanket, and it would be reusable even in theory. So you can use this to put out fires, open it up, put it over the fire. You can wrap yourself up in it if you are on fire. You can wrap yourself up if the house is on fire and you need to escape and you want to minimize burns, wrap this around and run out. Um, and this is, well, save your booty. Inexpensive too. You can go on Amazon about $22 and get four of them. So I keep them all over the house and one in the vehicle. Um, I've got a cooking pot. This is the MSR, I think it's called a stowaway pot. It's the smallest one that REI sells. It might be the smallest that they make. I like it a lot. I use it a lot. This is actually the one that I normally use and I'm just gonna buy myself a new one. So uh, it's got a top. I like how it locks down. Um, this top can, you know, it's not, I just stick it on there and make it a little easier. Uh, I filled this up with hot cocoa some tea, some coffee. If you are trying to keep hypothermia at bay, one of the best things you can do is sip on some warm, sweet treats. What's better than hot cocoa for that? Um, the calories and the carbs start your engine inside your body to help keep you warm and get you warm. But then also just sipping on something warm in general, even if it's not sweet, is going to warm you up from the inside. Inside out. So there we go. That goes with the cooking stove. Now to make that tea and all those sweet beverages, you need water. So I've got 11 of these emergency water packs in here. Uh, they recommend four per day per person. I really wanted to fit 12. I could not fit 12 in here. I tried and tried and tried. I can only do 11. It is what it is. Um, but these work great. I did a video on these specifically. There we go. Uh, along with water, I've got a dehydrated meal. This is a backpacker's pad thai. I taste tested this. I did the chicken one. It was delicious. Um, it's also really big. You get two servings, two good sized servings here. There's also oatmeal in here. This is the Quaker protein maple and brown sugar. There's two spoons and there is um, an MRE with the heater as well and some candy. I have another container of food, and this one just has some um, soup, uh, these little boxes of soup. I wanted to have something that you didn't necessarily, didn't necessarily need water to eat, and a long spoon, because that makes it a little bit easier on the, um, the backpacker meal to stir it up and everything. And I left a lot of space in here so that way she can add some granola bars or, you know, whatever extra she might want. And... Last container, oh, that popped open. Mm, all right. Last container is the stuff to basically keep warm. Uh, there's some Mylar blankets like this, um, along with duct tape that I wrapped around a matchstick. And you can use those to basically insulate the vehicle, put them up along the windows and the doors, make the space, space smaller and insulate it, keep it warm. Try to hold as much heat in as possible. I also have a couple of these Survive Outdoors Longer um, emergency bivvies. Basically a big orange Mylar blanket sack. <laughs> uh, here's another one. This is a, actually a different brand name, but the same thing. And yeah, it's basically just like a sleeping bag doesn't take up very much space, but they really do work. They keep you warm. Avoid skin to skin, to skin contact with this because uh, it can kind of like, they, they get cold to the touch and you can kind of suck the heat out of you. But as long as, don't get in here naked, have some clothes on, uh, it will keep you warm. There's also a knife. 
and two of these sterno cans to to cook with and also really just to keep warm as well um give some light and whatnot and th these cans they're used indoors so you know leave your window open just to make sure oxygen is getting in and circulating and all of that but the fumes from this thing are supposedly safe and it's used in the restaurant in industry for catering and whatnot um Oh yeah, and also some matches and a uh, lighter is in here. Uh, put the top on that later. Oh. And lastly, just some garbage bags. The garbage bags are infinitely useful. You know, collecting water uh, for various types of waste, make a rain poncho, whatever you need to do. And that's it. Uh, so, you know, additionally to this type of stuff, you really want to plan to have a snow shovel, um, like a collapsible or foldable type of snow shovel. You want to have like some, um, say, a bag of sand or kitty litter or uh, that garage. I forget what it's called, but like it absorbs oil. Like you put it down to absorb all the oil and stuff. Like makes you need something granular that you can put under the tires and it'll give you some traction to help you to get unstuck. There's also tire chains which, um, you know, if you live in a mountainous region, you probably already have those as kind of a requirement if you live in a snowy mountain area. I don't have them here. I don't feel like it's really necessary here, but uh, keeping some sand in the car is definitely not a bad idea. Having a collapsible sho snow shovel, not a bad idea. Depending on how you're stuck, that might be all you need to get out. Problem solved. Um, keeping gloves, mittens, hats, things like that in the car, always smart to have uh what else jumper cables the escape tool um that's that's really it i mean it's not a ton of stuff um this is a not a huge bag but i mean with this your chances of survival are, are really good so um not a huge investment in money for me a lot of the stuff i already had because i've been prepping for a while now and you know if you have been prepping for a while or camping for a while is like you know that you buy stuff and then you buy something else and you find something better and then you change your mind and you know all that so it's like it's constantly evolving so this is a mostly extra stuff uh so i can't tell you how much exactly i spent but you know it's just some ideas of things that you can do to get prepared hopefully you enjoy this video and that is helpful to you and uh i think that's it for this series Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. And hopefully my glasses will be either fixed or I'll have some new ones by then. And that's sad. <laughs> they still work, kind of. Ones they don't look down too much. <laughs> Thanks for watching.